Hi everyone, this is Overclocking TV from the Cebit. I'm here with Massman and Colin from Gigabyte and we are going to talk a little bit about the X58 or C. So Colin, first of all, could you please present us the board and explain us how you actually get to give birth to this board? Well, I can't take credit for birth. I think High Cookie is the one who actually gave birth to this board. Um, you know, it it was quite a, a long process of time, you know, actually years of developing this board because, you know, at our different overclocking events, um, go OC, um, listening to you guys in the community, finding out what it is that overclockers want on motherboards. Um, so we spent a lot of time, you know, first investigating what it is overclockers want, right? And then, of course, the design phase took a while as well. You know, certain features that we wanted to put on, um, certain features we wanted to take off. So, you know, and like I said before, this is really High Cookie's baby. He spent a lot of time and effort convincing uh, our company, uh, the, you know, to make this board and to make it how overclockers want it to be made. So, yeah, it's definitely High Cookie's labor of love. A lot of times, you know, people in the company said, well, we need to add a lot of different features onto the board to make it appealing to other segments. Um, that's what our competitors have done. You know, they've combined gaming and overclocking. Um, but definitely, you know, we came to the realization that those are really two separate markets. They really want two different things. And definitely the things that gamers want on board, you know, the graphics, the audio, the, you know, networking, um, are some of the things that maybe the overclocking boards needed something different. So, yeah, I mean, it was a little bit of a challenge to figure out, you know, what this market is for this board and how do we promote it. Um, but we definitely feel, you know, if you go out and you s just show people this back I.O., you can tell that this is a, a different motherboard, that this is made for a specific reason. And I think, you know, while the overclocking community may be small, it's still growing by, by leaps and bounds, right? And there's a lot more people interested in overclocking. And I think a lot of times, you know, young guys starting off, they may be a little hesitant to overclock because, you know, they don't realize, you know, what the hardware is and how it works. And, and this board allows them to sort of get into overclocking easier, right? We have a lot of features on board, like our 4G button that you just press and you can get an instant overclock. Um, and, you know, a lot of specific overclocking features that maybe will help novice people learn how to overclock. So actually Gigabyte had a strategy for the upcoming launch of this board. It was to release uh, week after week on Facebook and vi viral networks some sneak peeks of this board, like we saw first the rear, then some of the SATA ports and then some parts here. Uh, Massman, how excited were you about this board? Um, well, it's it's quite exciting to finally see a manufacturer take on the overclocking wish and, and make a, a special board especially for the, the, the overclockers and build by their wishes and I think that as an overclocking community we should thank Gigabyte for actually making this kind of board and, and uh, wanting to listen to, to what we have to say about it. Um, so yes, I'm excited. I want to test this board at home. I want to see how it performs. I want to see how how well it does. I especially want to see how many CPUs it will kill or will not kill. I mean, <laughs> I hope for a zero, but I don't know. So Colin, you expect the sales of this board to be good? The the two hundred and eighty dollars is you know we feel very confident in that price point. Uh, we really did take a lot of stuff off to get that price to where it is. Um, we did make a lot of. Um, you know, decisions in that regard. But we're also using much higher components throughout the motherboard that cost a lot more money. So, you know, all pause caps throughout the motherboard. We're using uh, driver modes. We also have specially designed um, ferrite core chokes, MPFCs, that uh, deliver up to 50 amps of power, or can handle 50 amps. Um, and those were specially made to order for this board. So definitely our component cost is much higher. Um, but we definitely feel that the 280 price point is, is, is pretty good. So we'll see. We'll see how well this board does, and we'll see what you guys have to say about it. We, we really do think this board is going to sell in the community because it really does have a lot of you know, features and, and, and really hit the target you know, market for this board. So I have some other question about the board. So first, uh, can you tell us about the launch date of the product? Um, so launch date. Uh, 
we're going to be shipping out, I believe, the second week of March, and then it just takes time to get to the different regions, depending on air shipping or sea shipping. So, sec uh, second week of March is when they they leave us. So, Massman, you had some uh, questions on the board on specific features. Uh, yeah, the first uh, question that came up was, what will you do with the different memory slots here? Will they be fixed or will they be the same mechanism and why? And okay, so this is an early production board. The uh, colors are going to actually match, so it's not going to be the white, it'll be orange. Um, but the mechanical um, element is still the same. Um, we've actually designed this board so that there's enough room for the PCI Express, this last card right here, to fit and still open completely. The peculiar thing about this board is that it's using the two SATA connectors instead of Molex. Is there any special reason uh, besides practicality or...? So, you know, the main reason that we're using these is, you know, connectivity-wise, it's easier to connect. And two, um, you're able to draw power from the different uh, rails of your power supply. And in fact, if you've got four graphics cards running in Crossfire, we definitely, you definitely need to plug in the power, um, have the additional power. So, and like I said, you're able to draw power from the different rails, so you're not going to overload your, your power supply, and you get a much uh, finer um, power current to, to your board, uh, much more stable. Uh, do you have any, any more specifics on the 4G button? We all know that it's, as an overclocker, as, an, as, an, as an, someone who knows how the hardware works, it's not very difficult to reach 4 gigahertz. But as a manufacturer, when you make a 4 gigahertz button, you need to guarantee it will always work. And how did you? How can you uh, warranty the four gigahertz to the to the customers? Yeah, you're right. It is pretty difficult because there's a couple of different factors. The first is what CPU somebody's using. Um, so for all of the different CPUs, we have different tables depending on CPU type. Um, once you hit that button, it'll read what your CPU is, and it'll it'll just uh, accordingly. Um, also, another factor, of course, is the, the cooling that you have on. If you're using a stock cooler, obviously, you know, if you're doing any overclocking, you have to worry about heat. Um, but we did a lot of testing. We tested with the crappiest stock coolers that we could find. And 4G, we definitely guarantee um, lots of testing. So, okay. are, are there any, any plans for, for instance, um, a micro ITX? Board. We have seen we have seen the H55N, right, which was um, loved by many overclockers in the competition we had at HWBot. And I reckon that for the extreme overclockers who are only running one VJ card, they don't need this part of the board. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you guys were doing some crazy stuff even with our mini ITX boards. Um, yeah, like I said, this is our first board in this uh, hopefully series, and. Definitely, we're playing around with, you know, hopefully being able to do different things, right? Um, yeah, maybe that's in the future. I don't know. I can't really comment right now. So you said this board took a long time to be developed. Now you just told us about a pro potential series. It, this board is ready to launch. So I suppose Haikuki is no more working on this one. What is he doing right now? Uh, Hi Cookie's still working with this board, right? I mean, he's got his LN2 tank and he's still, you know, breaking records with it. Um, and of course, as a motherboard manufacturer, we're always developing new things and new concepts and new platforms are being launched constantly. So, yeah, there's there's more things in the future coming up. Is there is there any any uh, count number on the number of fights that were? That you guys had about this board. I mean, I can I can imagine High Cookie throwing with with main boards to the to the sales guys when they are asking for audio. Or See, the funny thing about that is um, because this is a, is a very different product for sales to sell, right? So, so you know, there's a bit of education in the market of you know selling this board. But, I mean, High Cookie in the company is, is pretty well recognized as, you know, he's the guy who knows our hardware the best. And I think a lot of people, most people in our company trust him with his judgment. So, so I really do think that he, um, he had a lot of guidance in this board and a lot of the things that he suggested, you know, people, you know, followed that and really believe that, you know, this was the right way to go for this board.
And of course our engineers as well. Like, you know, it wasn't High Cookie's effort alone that built this board. Like we had a lot of, you know, a team dedicated to this board who spent a lot of time and hours going back and forth and, you know, changing things, that, you know. How, how many how many people worked on this main board? I mean, engineers, High Cookie, marketing, sales. How many people had input on, on the design and uh, the, the features of this board? Well, I'd have to say thousands, right? I mean, all of you guys had input on this board. Um, internally, like, like I said, there was a team dedicated, high cookie, all sales and marketing had some sort of influence in you know, building this board. So it was a company-wide effort, um, even from the very high-end management, right? To be able to do, to do this board, um, there had to be confidence at the high end as well and it's nice to really see that from from this company because you know we really produce a lot of really good products and to have that confidence from the high end to allow us to do this is is, is a really good thing um, you told us hi cookie it's his baby what was he actually the leader of this uh, team that was working on the board or was it someone else from gigabyte that we know so Gigabyte is structured so there's different teams for different things and obviously there's an engineering team and a marketing team and sales team. Um, but in terms of you know design, you know, when it came to the features of this board, you know, definitely High Cookie, you know, made out a list of all the things he wanted, his his dream list. You know, it goes to the engineers, the engineers say yes we can do this or no we can't. You know, sales say yes we should have this, no we should not. So it really is a group effort, but you know, High Cookie is the one that said, you know, fought for things that he thought this board should really have, and everybody really trusted him on that. So, thank you. That's exactly what I wanted to know. Do you have uh, some other questions? Yeah, which I was just uh, asking behind the scenes already. Uh, why the orange colors? Could you just tell it for the audience? Uh, it's quite interesting because it's a new color scheme. So, well, honestly, you know, as a board manufacturer, we. Every time we, we do a board, you know, we have different color schemes that we can pick from and you know, every color scheme imaginable has been used now. So, you know, you're kind of limited in that regard. Um, but orange is, is not a very common color that you see. Uh, none of the top boards now have orange. And, uh, you know, we went around the office. We had a bunch of different colors, uh, different matches of colors. Everybody decided, you know, had their one vote. And High Cookie really pimped out the orange. I don't know if Halloween's his favorite or holiday or, or what the deal is, but yeah, so we all voted. And I don't know, I like the orange. I think it's pretty cool. Product. Massman, you already received yours, right? Yeah, I received it while I wasn't seeing it. So I blame DHL, not Kikabyte. I blame <laughs> DHL. If you would have received it before saving it, would you have taken it here? Probably not. I would hide it in my in my in my bench room so no one else can touch it. <laughs> Honestly, we're pretty excited as well. Like more excited to see how you guys get these boards and see you know you guys playing with them, seeing you know, telling us what you think about them. Like we're uh, this is really exciting for us at Gigabyte. You know, this is like I said, one of the first times that we've actually gone out and specifically targeted a market with, with a board. So we're just as excited as you guys to, to see how it goes. So this was the presentation of the X58 OC. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Massman, for joining us. And we hope we are all going to enjoy this board.